Okay, folks, let's talk about Nazis. Not exactly a laugh riot, right? But believe it or not, even in the darkest of times, there's always something absurd to uncover. Take their fashion choices, for instance. These guys were obsessed with uniforms. Hugo Boss, anyone? And looking intimidating. Which is ironic, because have you ever tried goose-stepping in leather pants in the middle of a Polish summer? Not exactly practical. And don't even get me started on the hats. Those skull-emblazoned caps were like a beacon screaming, Hey, we're the bad guys! It's like they were trying to make it easy for the Allies. Just look for the guys who look like they're late for a Darth Vader convention. Seriously, the Nazis were a walking, talking, cautionary tale about the dangers of taking yourself way too seriously. But hey, at least they were consistent. From their meticulously planned rallies to their meticulously crafted propaganda, everything had to be on point. The Nazis were all about control, about projecting an image of power and order. But as we'll see behind the facade of this carefully constructed regime, things were far more chaotic, far more human, and often far more ridiculous than they seemed. So buckle up because we're about to take a deep dive into the not-so-funny-yet-strangely-hilarious world of Nazi Germany. Now, when you think of Nazis, you probably don't picture a group of guys hanging out, sipping herbal tea, and discussing the alignment of the planets. But believe it or not, behind the brutal facade of the Third Reich, there was a bizarre undercurrent of New Age beliefs and esoteric practices. Hitler himself was a vegetarian, allegedly motivated by both health concerns and a weird, mystical connection to animals. And it didn't stop there. The Nazis were obsessed with the occult, with ancient myths, and with the idea of a mystical Aryan past. They sent expeditions to Tibet searching for lost civilizations and consulted astrologers to predict the outcome of the war. Seriously, these guys were a strange mix of brutal pragmatism and mystical mumbo-jumbo. It's enough to make you wonder if they were holding out for Gandalf to show up with the Fellowship of the Ring to save the day. But alas, reality, as it often does, had other plans. The Nazis' bizarre blend of brutality and mysticism ultimately proved to be their downfall. A testament to the fact that even the most carefully constructed ideologies can crumble when faced with the absurdity of human nature. Let's talk about Aryan beauty standards, shall we? According to Nazi ideology, the ideal Aryan was supposed to be tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. Basically a walking, talking Barbie and Ken set. The reality, however, was a little different. Hitler, for one, was short, dark-haired, and, well, let's just say he wasn't exactly Brad Pitt. And it gets better. The Nazis were so obsessed with this mythical Aryan ideal that they went to absurd lengths to promote it. They encouraged breeding programs, gave out awards for Aryan babies, and even created a whole system of racial classification based on physical characteristics. It was all incredibly scientific, you see. Except, of course, it wasn't. The whole concept of an Aryan race was a complete fabrication, a pseudo-scientific myth used to justify their hateful ideology. Now we all know the Nazis were all about efficiency, right? The trains running on time, the meticulously planned invasions, except when they weren't. Because for all their talk about order and precision, the Nazis were actually pretty good at messing things up. Take Operation Barbarossa, their invasion of the Soviet Union. They were so confident, so convinced of their own superiority, that they didn't even bother packing winter clothes for their soldiers. Because, you know, who needs coats when you're conquering the world, right? Needless to say, things didn't go according to plan. The Russian winter hit the German army like a Siberian blizzard and suddenly those goose-stepping leather boots weren't looking so practical anymore. The lesson here? Pride, as they say, comes before a fall, especially when you're facing sub-zero temperatures in a Russian winter. Section 5. More than just a mustache decoding Hitler's image. Let's talk about Hitler's image for a second. Specifically, that mustache. I mean, what was the deal with that thing? Was it a fashion statement, a political statement, or maybe he just lost a bet with Mussolini? Whatever the reason, that little toothbrush under his nose became one of the most recognizable symbols of the 20th century. And it wasn't just the mustache. Hitler was a master of image control. He understood the power of propaganda, the importance of spectacle and symbolism. From the massive rallies to the carefully crafted speeches, everything was designed to project an image of strength, of power, of invincibility. He knew that to control the masses, you couldn't just appeal to their reason, you had to appeal to their emotions. And what better way to do that than with a striking image, a catchy slogan, and yes, 
even a ridiculous mustache? Section 6. The Propaganda Machine Selling Hate with a Smile Now let's talk about Nazi propaganda for a second. These guys were masters of manipulation, of twisting the truth and selling hate with a smile. They used every tool at their disposal, radio, film, posters, to spread their message of fear and division. They demonized their enemies, glorified violence, and promised a utopian future that never materialized. They even had a children's book, Dare Gift Pills, which literally translates to the poisonous mushroom. The poisonous mushrooms in this case? Jews, of course. Because nothing says family fun like teaching kids to hate an entire group of people, right? It's chilling, it's absurd and it's a stark reminder of the power of propaganda to warp minds and poison societies. Section 7. Laughter as resistance humor in dark times. But amidst the darkness there were also flickers of hope, of defiance, of humor, because even in the face of oppression people found ways to resist, to mock their oppressors, to hold on to their humanity. Political satire, often disguised as harmless jokes or cartoons, became a powerful weapon against Nazi ideology. People whispered jokes about the regime, shared satirical cartoons, and found humor in the absurdity of it all. Because sometimes, laughter is the only way to stay sane in an insane world. It was a reminder that even under the most oppressive regimes, the human spirit, the spirit of laughter and defiance, could not be entirely extinguished. Section 8. Never Forget the legacy of laughter in the face of tyranny. So, what can we learn from all of this? What lessons can we take away from the darkness of the Nazi era? Well, for one, we learn that laughter can be a powerful weapon against tyranny, a way to resist, to cope, to remind ourselves of our shared humanity. We learn that the line between absurdity and horror can be terrifyingly thin, and that even the most efficient propaganda machine can't erase the basic human need for laughter and connection. But most importantly, we learn that we must never forget, never forget the victims, never forget the lessons, and never forget the power of laughter to shine a light in even the darkest of times. Because as long as we remember, as long as we keep laughing, as long as we keep fighting for a better world, the human spirit will always prevail.